Hello everyone! In this control engineering and control theory tutorial, we explain how to model and simulate a mass spring damper system in Simulink. The sketch of the system is shown over here. The system consists of a box with a mass of M that's attached through a spring and a damper to the wall. We assume that there is a control input force F acting on the box. The ordinary differential equation describing the dynamics of this system is shown over here. This equation is derived by using Newton's second law. In this equation, x is the displacement of the box from its equilibrium point. x dot is the velocity and x double dot is the acceleration. m is the mass of the box, b is the damping constant and c is the spring constant. Here is the simulink block diagram modeling the dynamics of this system. Here is the input force, in this case it's equal to 50 newtons. And if I double click over here, I will open a sub block modeling the dynamics of our mass spring damper system. Now, if I go back and if I run this simulation, and if I double click on the scope, I can see the displacement as the function of time. That is, when I apply a constant force of 50 Newton, I can see how the displacement behaves over time. On the x-axis is the time and on the y-axis is the displacement x. In this tutorial, you will learn how to model this system from scratch and how to simulate it. Okay, let's start with explanations. The easiest approach for modeling and for simulating this system in Simulink is to first obtain a state space model of this system. We derive the state space model as follows. First of all, let's divide this equation by 1 over n. As the result, we obtain x double dot plus b over m x dot plus c over m x is equal to 1 over m multiplying f. Next, we will introduce state space variables. The first state space variable x1 is equal to x. The second state space variable x2 is equal to the velocity that is equal to x dot. From these two equations, it follows. x1 dot is actually equal to x dot. And from this equation, we can see that x dot is actually equal to x2. And this is our first state equation. x1 dot is equal to x2. Next, from the second equation over here, it follows that x double dot is equal to minus c over m x minus b over m x dot plus 1 over m f. Next, let's use the assigned state space variables. We can see that x2 dot from this equation, I will write it here, is actually equal to x double dot. Consequently, if I substitute x double dot by x2 dot in this equation, I will obtain that x2 dot is equal to, let's see, minus c over m, and what is x? x actually is x1. Then I have minus b over m multiplying x dot. x dot from here we can see that is equal to x2. And finally I have plus 1 over m multiplying f. And this is the second state equation. To summarize everything, here's the first state equation and here's the second state equation. 
Here are the two state equations written once more. To summarize, an ordinary differential equation of the second order, given over here, can be written as a system of the two first order differential equations. Next, from these two state equations it follows dx1 over dt is actually equal to x2. Or if we integrate this equation it follows that x1 is actually an integral of x2 with respect to time. Similarly, from the second state equation, it follows that dx2 over dt is equal to the right-hand side, that is, it's equal to minus c over m x1 minus b over m x2 plus 1 over m f. Or, from this equation, it follows that after integration we have that x2 is actually an integral of everything that's on the right hand side. We have minus c over m x1 minus b over m x2 plus 1 over m f dt. These two equations, that is this one and this one, are very important for the development of the Simulink block diagram. And we will implement first this equation and then this equation. That is, we will implement them together in a Simulink block diagram. Okay, let's start with modeling. Open MATLAB. After you open MATLAB, define the system parameters. The system parameters are the mass of the box, the damping constant and the spring constant. You can choose some other values over here. However, for simplicity I chosen m to equal to 10, b equal to 5 and c equal to 10. Evaluate this script. This is very important since by evaluating this script we place these variables or better to say parameters in the MATLAB memory and the Simulink block diagram will be able to access these parameters directly from the MATLAB workspace, that is from the MATLAB memory. The next step is to start Simulink. To start Simulink, type in the command window Simulink. Then click on the blank model. And let's start with modeling. Here, for presentation clarity, I have wrote again the two integral equations that are necessary for obtaining the model. Okay, let's start with the modeling of the input force. In this tutorial, we assume that the input force is actually a constant. To create that constant, double-click here and type constant. Here it is. Enlarge this block, double-click on the block, and let's specify the value of the input force. Let's select 15 newtons. Click OK. Next, we can see over here that the force is multiplied by a constant 1 over m. To create that constant, we will use a gain block. Double click over here and search for gain. Here it is. Enlarge the gain block. Double click on the gain block and over here type 1 over m. Note over here that Simulink is able to access all the variables defined in the MATLAB workspace and click on OK. Here it is. Connect these two blocks and let's continue. Now we have 1 over m multiplying the force f. Next, we need to add an add block. This is because we need to add this term and these two terms with the minus signs. To do that, double click here and search for add. Here is the add block. Notice over here that add block has two ports. However, we have one, two, three terms over here to add. So double click over here and let's do the following. Add, actually erase the second plus and add two minus signs and click on apply. Click on OK. Now connect this part over here. And now we have force multiplying 1 over m. Next, we need to add x1, x2 multiplying the, cor the corresponding constants. Let's start with x1 and we will go backwards. 
Over here, we obviously need to add a gain. And here is the gain. Click on this gain, click on format. Now rotate this gain, double click on the gain, and obviously the gain should be C over M. Okay, click on OK and connect this part over here. Or actually, let's connect it to the third block. Let me just expand to the third port to correct myself. Okay, here we will have X1 coming in, multiplying C over M, and we will have a minus sign. This will model this part. Let's do the same thing for minus B over M multiplying X2. Again, typo. Double click over here, search for gain. Then let's rotate this gain. Let's do this. Double click over here and type B over M. Click OK. So here is the B over M. Connect these blocks over here. Now we have minus B over M and minus C over M. Here, we'll, we'll, we, here we will have X2 coming in and here we will have X1 over here. Okay, the output of this block is actually this part over here. Next, we need to add an integrator over here in order to obtain X2. To do that, double click over here and search for an integrator. Here is an integrator. Connect this part over here, move this, this block down and this block down. Okay, so what's happening over here? The output of this block will actually be x2. We can see it from this equation. Again, this add block will create everything under the integrator. Once we integrate this part over here, that is, we will add this block, the output of this integrator will be x2. Next, to create x1, we need to integrate once again the output of this integrator that is to integrate x2 and let's do that double click here and search for an integrator here it is okay this will be x2 and over here we will obtain x1 let's analyze these equations this block c over m actually should have as its input x1 so let's take this output and connect it to C over M. And now we have X1 coming over here, C over M, this part over here, with a minus sign. The input to this block should be X2, and X2 is actually the output of this first integrator. So let's connect this part over here. Good. Next, let's add the mux blocks. Double click here and search for mux. Here it is. Connect one port of the mux to x1 and another port of mux to x2. That is, this port will carry information about position and this line will carry the information about the velocity. Next, double click here and search for scope. Scope is used to plot the outputs. Okay. Connect over here, click on simulation, and click on run. And double click on the scope, and let's see the output. Okay, what do we see over here? The yellow line is actually the position x, and the blue line is actually the velocity. Good. Now we know how to simulate the system. Over here, you should notice that this simulation is obtained for zero initial position and for zero initial velocity. Next, let's learn how to set the initial position and the initial velocity inside of our block diagram. To do that, double click on this integrator. By specifying initial condition over here, we will actually specify the initial condition for x1, that is the initial condition for our position. For example, let's specify 1 over here, and over here, double click to specify the initial condition for x2, that is the initial condition for velocity. Let's specify minus 0.5, and click on OK. 
Next, let's run the simulation once more. Double click on the scope and let's see the results. And you can see how the results changed. We can see now that the yellow line, that is the position, starts from 1 and we can see the oscillation and over here we can see the velocity. And we can see how the velocity behaves over time. Okay, that's all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons.